Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice, and we have a doozy of an episode lined up. We're going to talk about getting your CPA. For those of you that are still with me after I said CPA, first of all, thank you. We're not talking about accountants and numbers, but we have a uh, an amazing guest lined up, Pete Moore, Simplifying Entrepreneurship. Uh, he's a business coach, consultant, strategist. He's owned some businesses. He's exited businesses. He's got a, an amazing resume. I'm excited to dive in. Uh, but before we get there, Pete, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, man. Thanks for having me, Brandon. I love these conversations, and I think we're going to have a good one here today. Yeah, same here. So before we lose the entire audience, can you define for me what, what we're talking about before when we say CPA, getting your CPA? Yeah, it's not your certified professional accountancy. And I mean, nothing wrong with that. I was pretty close to having one of those, but it just wasn't for me. I've got the sort of credentials behind me and maybe six months away. But I realized early on that, you know, being head in the books all the time just wasn't for me. The CPA I'm talking about is really a leadership component uh, for you as the leader of the business. And when I think of CPA, and yeah, it, it is going back to school a little bit, but it's all around mastering your communication skills, your process management, and your accountability in your organization. And if you think this whole idea of moving from manager to owner or operator to owner, um, this idea of you know not living in your business and working in your business and making every single decision every single day, you know, there's more to life than that. And as we kind of get into our business, in the first few years, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get things rolling. And I get that. But once you've got a, a few dollars in your pocket and you're sort of got the business up and running and you're kind of saying, jeepers, you know, I would like to see my family. I would like to take a vacation sometime. I would actually like to take my kid to baseball practice or hockey practice or swimming lessons or whatever the case is. And, you know, maybe even go out to dinner with my partner and my wife or my husband, whatever the case is. And and, you know, it's all around this idea of your leadership and how you manage your business. And that's why I love this idea of constant and never ending improvement on communication skills, process management and accountability in your business. Yeah, I, I'm excited to unpack this because I, I hear all the time the it's it's said as a joke. But when people say, you know, oh, I want to go on vacation. And then the business owner entrepreneur is like, huh, what's a vacation? And I'm just like, oh, don't do that. Like you're limiting yourself. There's more to life than running a business. It's my personal mission to create business owners, not business operators. That sounds like exactly what you're doing. So I'm excited to, uh, to dive in here, but how do you start by understanding this, this CPA, this framework, like unpack this for me, where, when you encounter a business owner, who's, who is the center of their business, they're making the decisions, they're doing the day-to-day -day work, they're executing. Where do you start to pull them out of that trap? Well, it's an interesting thing, you know, Brandon, um, I'm a certified exit planner and I work with a lot of people that are either transitioning their business to their kids or transitioning out of their business to, uh, you know, a third party that's going to maybe buy their business, whatever the case is. But part of setting that up is to actually remove yourself from the day to day businesses, because that's when your business has the most value, at least to outsiders. Right. And so. Just think about it. If you are the person that makes every decision, that has every key relationship, that is involved in every supplier discussion, customer discussion, all of these different things for your business, and you're actually wanting out of your business, whether it's to out for a week to go on vacation, a month for a little sabbatical or out permanently, that's a problem. And so when we think about the idea around process management, it's like, let's get into your business. And when I look at exit strategies, whether you're exiting for that week, the month or for permanently, the idea around that is that you can align your process management, which a lot of business owners, well, for those of you who are watching the video, you can see I don't have much hair because like for the first 10 years, I was pulling it all out um, 30 years later in business. But uh, from that perspective, it's like, I've got things rolling now that 
my process is really good. We own some retail stores and I work in my retail stores about one day a week. And the rest of the time I coach other people because I've got my business running on rails. I've got process in place. I've got accountability structures in place so that business decisions are being made without me every day. And in fact, almost I don't need to be in the business almost at all unless I really kind of want to be. And so once you get your business through that and communication happens continuously within our leadership group and within the rest of our business. And that's what I try and help other business owners too, because as we build communication process and accountability as leaders, everything seems to come together. And when it comes together, it's not only good for you, but it's good for your exit strategy. Because one thing, you will exit your business one day. So why not start preparing for it now? And I mean, Ultimately, a lot of younger people in particular don't, ah, yeah, I got lots of time, but there are things that happen, you know, and I'll tell you a few of them. One, of course, the big one, death, but there's disability too. There's divorce that causes a lot of business exits. There's disagreements between partners that cause a lot of business exits for one person, for both, for many. So if you don't start working through this stuff, the CPA, the communication process and accountability that you align so that it can be transferred to whomever is going to run that business, whether it's your kid or whether it's somebody else along the way, you're not doing yourself justice and you're not building the most value within your business. Yeah. And one of the other things that I see a lot with clients or just generally people on the internet is outside of all those factors, you also have the burnout that comes with mm -hmm. being the center of decisions and the center of running your business. The, the yeah. person that starts the business, the entrepreneur, the person that has that spirit, if you will, mm -hmm. they naturally don't want to be the person executing on running that business day to day. So it's, it's inevitable. It's a matter of time before you get burned out. So if you don't remove yourself from the center of that operation, it's one of those things. It's, it's either going to kill you or figuratively kill you with burnout. And I, I, completely support this conversation, which is why it's so necessary to have. So before you have uh, 10 laws of exiting your business, which I want to get to, but before we get there, one last question is, what do you get as the most common pushback from clients before you kind of dive into helping them get out of the operations? Like, are they emotionally or logically justifying themselves being in the center of the business? There's a few really interesting words that entrepreneurs use. <laughs> <laughs> when we think about when we think about funnier. process and accountability, a lot of the times they'll say something like this. Well, I just don't trust them to do it yet. I still need to make the decision. What that usually means is that um, it's not that they don't trust the person, because if they don't trust the person, that person shouldn't be working in their organization already. They use language as though I don't trust them to do it. But what they're really meaning is I don't trust the process. So when you think of it, it's not that they don't trust the person in most cases. It's that they don't trust the process. So that's where you've got to hone in the process. You've really got to dig down into the process management of that and make sure that you've honed it. It's out of your head. It's onto paper. It's onto video. It's onto audio. It's onto different ways. So people that learn in different ways can absorb that information so they can take the action without your involvement. And that's what accountability is. And a lot of business owners don't even have a proper accountability chart, or some people use the word sort of organizational chart. I like the word accountability chart because it, it says what it is. It's not just here's your titles. This is what you are accountable for. And from that perspective, we go in, work through accountability charts, work through process management, align and assign the um, accountabilities to each of these people. And then you move from owning those up to the owner's board. And when you're in the owner's board, it becomes sort of, well, I call it from details to dashboard. So now I don't have to be marred down in the details of doing everything and making every decision in my business. I can look at it from a dashboard perspective and I can be working in what I call my love it zone within the business. And by the way, so can the rest of my team. Because when you start aligning and assigning all that stuff, the real power is when all of your team is really working in their love it zone too. And everybody knows with clarity, that's the communication piece, what the process is and who's accountable for it. That's when, you know, excuse my language, but that's when shit gets done. Absolutely. I'm curious for you in your, in your retail locations, you said you work about once a week, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. What are 
what are some of the things in your love it zone? Like, what do you love doing in those, in those <laughs> businesses? Before I came on this call, I was in uh, our store and I was doing a bunch of videos. And so I'm, um, I'm, I'm one of the people, basically I'm the front stage person. I call it front stage and backstage. And so I'm the front stage people. So my, my people at work basically say, Hey, we need a video on this. We need a video on that. We need a video on this. So I went in and I did um, eight or nine product videos this morning. That'll go up on social. Um, my, my component is I put up the tripod, I hit record, I talk about the stuff and then I hand it off to somebody else. They split it, edit it, post it, all of the other things that happen to get from that stage to um, you know, so when the reel goes live or whatever the case is, that all happens through some other people's hands in our process and accountability pack. That's amazing. I, I love that. I think everybody should focus there, like, figure out what those things are for you and then figure yeah. out the quickest way to get everything else off your plate. That's, that's where the magic of business, in my opinion, really. And starts you know, there. Brandon, it's different for everybody. Cause yeah. I can tell you the person that's really good at setting all that stuff up and everything, there's no way you could get her in front of a camera, right? So that's the, and she loves doing all this other stuff. She checks the boxes. She does this. She posts the stuff. She's like totally organized. And for me, it's just like, Hey, I just want to talk. Yeah. And that's why you're here, right? That's why we're doing this. That's yeah. awesome. Um, you're, you're practicing what you preach. So I put, uh, I put your website on the screen. You have a, an ebook for the listeners, which yeah. I want to dive into a little bit. I sure. lied before it's the 10 laws of going from operator to owner, same concept. That's how you yeah. exit your business, which that's is awesome. Like Pete said earlier, that's it's going to happen. Let's plan how that happens. So let's start to dissect these a little bit. We do not have time for all 10. So for those of you watching or listening, it's in the description down below. You can go download your copy. I literally grabbed mine right before we started recording uh, and it's juicy. So Pete, let's dive in. You tell me, what are your favorite laws out of the 10? I think everything starts with prioritizing customer focus. So mm. I use, I mean, I have a whole sort of thing around guiding principles, which is one of the other laws, but my part of building the guiding principles, I think everybody talks vision and, you know, strategy and all this kind of stuff. But one, a lot of those things, um, vision and mission are really internal focused, internally focused. And uh, I use one called the promise. And I look as the promise as being externally focused, focused on your customer. So, and here's how you drive your promise. Your promise is really understanding with full focus, customer focus, what the pain you're trying to solve is with that customer, aligning your unique ways of solving that, differentiating you from your com competition so that this customer can live a better life. And because everybody buys a better life, it doesn't matter whether you buy a steak or whether you buy uh, consulting services or whether you buy you know, a new automobile, whatever the case is, you always, when you're ready to write that check, put down your credit card, lay your cash down, you're thinking of how this is going to affect your better life. So the sooner you can get that down into a concise way of aligning that, then you've got all your marketing, you've got all the different things you put on your website, all this stuff comes together. And I'll just use, we own some shoe stores. So our promise at Shootopia is called look great and feel fantastic. Pretty simple, but that's what you want. You want a simple fat, want a simple promise that outlines what it is you do and what their benefit is. And then I've broken that down even into uh, 12 letters. Uh, well, actually nine, even more focused. And those nine letters are ooh, ah, and aha. And if you think of look great, it's like looking in the mirror. Ooh, I look pretty good. Ah is close your eyes with that pair of shoes on. It's like, ah, those feel fantastic. Aha is I finally found the perfect pair, something that looks great and feels fantastic. I never thought that was the case. I was always or, right? So try to think of your product and service, and I'm talking to you, the listener, and try to lay it out in feelings, in words, simplify it, and keep the customer at the very front edge of that because that's what's gonna drive the cash into your till. I uh, We could nerd out on this for the next 45 minutes because this this is my jam. Um, yeah. we, we work with our clients all the time for with strategic planning. And yeah. what we always find is if it's a new client, we have to completely revise their mission, vision, and core values oh, yeah. because of exactly what you said. They're all internally focused and customers don't care. We don't even know who we're serving. We just know it's benefiting us. So we flip it around, we serve the customer. And what I loved about yours that I just want to point out for the listener, one word, feel. 
you yeah. tapped into the customer's emotion after working with you, which yeah. is so, so powerful. I'm sure, I mean, we could speak to for hours what that does for your staff. Like, ha mm -hmm. I want to ask you that actually, because I'm, I'm so curious. How does your staff show up and work with customers because of that one word? Well, I think, you know, part of another law is cultivate your leadership skills and another one's, you know, having good teams and stuff like that. But this idea of creating the culture. Right. And when everybody lives the promise at your business, when your promise is properly communicated and there's process around it, and I build a models called the heart models for different businesses that we work with and the heart, you know, at the center of the model is your promise and you're building your structure and your process around that so that it all pulls everybody into that feeling at the very center of the heart. And, you know, if your team isn't aligned with that, it's pretty simple to uh, tell because they know it and you know it and they probably won't last that long because they're just not in alignment with the culture and from that perspective we lead with the promise so we talk about it in the interview process we go we we ask questions on how they would live that in the interview process you know we follow up with that in our regular rhythm of uh sort of uh, quarterly chats with our team along with every day, of course, but you know, all of these different things bleed into the fact that we need to live at the very heart and center of our business. And I'm not all for this idea that the customer is always right, but we always want to deliver our promise to our customer. That's for sure. Absolutely. That's huge. And just having that same unified direction as a company, yeah, is is more powerful than almost anything else because most companies just they exist and there's no direction, there's no unification of the team. It's wild what goes on out there in business, but you know, Brandon, that is I not think, the case here. I think you still need to have, like I suggest, still having the vision and mission. But I just look at those as truly internal documents. We bring them up in our monthly meetings. We bring them up all the stuff internally, but the promise is the one you shout out to the world. Right. Yeah. No, it's important because that's what your customers are going to feel, or at yeah. least that's the goal of what they should feel with working with you. But For if sure. you haven't identified that, how does your team know still? Like yeah. even if you have those internal documents and they don't specify what the promise is, they don't know if they've won on a day-to-day -day basis. That when they're working with your customers, I don't know. Did they feel that promise come through? Did I deliver on the promise for them? And you see that in your testimonials and review in reviews too. So it becomes a very clear scorecard, which I, I love that it's, it's still externally focused. That's yeah. the way it should be. So um, Pete, like I said, we don't have time to dive into all 10 laws. That's why you, the listener, grab it. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes. Go download the ebook. Um, but Pete, one last question before I before we wrap up this episode. Um, in, in regards to the 10 laws, what's the one thing, if you had to pick, that holds business owners back from becoming a true owner of their business? Is it, is it a mindset? Is it the process? Is it the accountability? Where do you find is that biggest holdup that if people just listen to this episode and did one thing, they could make a difference in, in getting closer to ownership? Well, you know, there's, there are a couple really. Um, but I think it really revolves around the fact that most small business owners started off making all the decisions because they had to because maybe they didn't have the deepest pockets. Maybe they just had to get in there and do it. And that's a very, very common thing. And we get habitualized into making the decisions, right? Like every other habit that we build in our lives as leaders and as people. But the thing is, if you haven't, if you've, if you've got down this path and making every decision and you haven't been able to overcome releasing accountability, think about this, think about that idea of trust. Because if you're saying to yourself and using language, like, I don't trust them to do it yet, what's holding you back? And it's usually not, and people always say, oh, they just don't want to give up their, their power and stuff like that. But it's not always the case. I find it's just that they haven't prepared properly through their process management. That's the whole idea of the communication process and accountability to feel comfortable enough to align and assign the accountability to somebody else. And as soon as you start doing that, it's, it's like a light turned on and it's, it's like, Oh, what else can I hand off? Oh, what else can I hand off? And we get really sort of uh, excited about the fact that people are doing things without us and we can, you know, move the ball here. So, you know, it's, it's a really interesting thing, but I think this idea here is to get started with accountability, 
hone your process, communicate cl with clarity all the things you need to do so that things can happen without you and you can be more free. Get your CPA. It's that easy. I love it. it. Thank you so much for coming. This is uh, this has been a great episode that a lot of people need to hear. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And for you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. Before you subscribe, though, download the 10 laws. Why do I have to tell you three times? Come on, just go, go to the website, download Pete's 10 laws and go from operator to owner. I promise you the freedom on the other side is well worth the journey. I want you to get there. Pete wants you to get there. And we want you to keep listening to this show every single day so that we can get you there one step at a time. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.